and I was trying to come up with other than hello, welcome to the podcast. Bonjour. So bonjour, hola, como estas? Um, Sandy's language. Uh, wait, wait, wait. What, uh, what's the, um, <laughs> Don't even ask me. If we were in Hawaii, we would say aloha. aloha. Oh, Get with it. Duh. If you were in, you say aloha for what, Eman? Aloha. Aloha means what? Means hello and goodbye, buddy. Come oh, on, okay. you get both. I mean, you knew that. You were just acting like you didn't know it. <laughs> yeah. And um, any other languages you know? Nope. In German? Ooh. Slovakian? Is that a language? I don't know. No, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know German. Spanish is all I got, and it's very rough. Korean. Korean? Korean. You could say hello. Oh, yeah. oh, do it again. What? That wasn't a language you gave the first job. Yeah. Konnichiwa. So Korean. I guess yes. I can, so what language is Kenichiwa? Japanese. Japanese. <laughs> See, I knew another one. Didn't know. Bilingual. I like the way she did that, though. You're getting ready to go on a trip. So I am, getting, yeah, Are you doing yeah. um, a language app a, to get ready? A stone? No. No, you're just, you just know this. I just know this. You just yeah. know this. Oh, hashtag <laughs> rare breed. Yeah. Oh, oh, man. <laughs> no, I just, Put that in the comments. I just know things. <laughs> wow. That's that was, that was <laughs> wow. I, mean, I just know. This is one thing she knows. It was a fact she gave me before we started. Giraffes are tall. <laughs> and then it was refuted rapidly and said giraffes aren't that tall, their necks are just their really necks long. Are just long. And I would have to agree that. It's like saying uh, hippos aren't heavy, their skin is just tight. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? I mean, that is don't not have the long same. Snouts. They just have big noses. They have a big nose. Long snouts, just big noses? Just okay, to... I mean. <laughs> Those don't Sharks make any teeth sense. really aren't that sharp. It's just, they just ours, hurt are, when very, you ours are very dull. I mean, what are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's a good comparison. It's at not all. at all. Mm, nope. At all. <laughs> but as far as the giraffes are tall, I, they are. Have you ever ridden on a giraffe? <laughs> what? Have you? <laughs> I mean, I'm asking <laughs> you. Have you ever ridden? I was going to go down a couple of animals. No. Have you ever ridden a giraffe? What about a camel? I've ridden a camel before. I've never ridden yeah. a camel. Yeah, have you ridden an elephant? You've never been to like a fair or in anything where they had an elephant and you got on the hey, back. Man, of it? You, you know when you drive them down no. seventy five, you what see those you fairs going on the to side. Elephants. That's the only fairs I've been. When to. I was younger, uh, and I, the grew, I grew up in Pensacola, and we would drive to New Orleans to the Audubon Zoo, and they had a elephant that you would. Get you know on the why? Back of you can't ride. do that now. You, I'm want, pretty it's sure it's. To it's I'm pretty sure. It's I was a thirty-five in- year old, seven year old. I'm sure that elephant was not hurting. <laughs> Hey, I'm just saying. But there are some people that would put strain on that elephant. <laughs> <laughs> I always think about that with horses. Do you oh, ever, yeah. I, know. Think there, I you, don't. You don't? You never think so you about never that? you really like, watching somebody ride a horse like, man, that horse. Man, that horse. I don't strange. really think about horses. That's, that's, uh, but I mean, you're not like, well, I don't either. Blue, Who's in there <laughs> thinking about horses? <laughs> Obviously not out of the blue sand. I don't <laughs> either. But I'm, I'm saying, like, if you're going down the road and... There is someone on the side of the road riding a horse, which does happen, right? You, mm-hmm. In Riverdale, there's horses. I mean, there's not people, in Riverdale. It, there are. I've seen them. I've been to Midtown where? at Fellini's Pizza, and like six people rode up on a horse. If we were editing this video, I'd send you a picture and let Sandy insert it at this moment. And you would see it. People ride <laughs> I horses can, I can way Midtown, more than you yeah. think. And if you mm-hmm. go to Fayetteville, horseback or in dude, carriage? horseback. Oh, in carriage. Yeah, they're Amish. No, on a on a <laughs> back of <laughs> more a horse. To see that. On the back of a horse <laughs> with a saddle, and sometimes people that are on there. Are stressing the horse's legs. That's all I was mm-hmm. saying. So in other words, saying, it's called something. There is no bigger, another bigger than other. <laughs> There's no another <laughs> words. Than other. So, so does that mean horses have uh, weight limits? Um, I don't think they do because I've seen them do things in movies with people that are abnormal. Nah. Their legs are extremely strong. So you don't, th- but they, but they can be strained. <laughs> Hold on. I mean, you don't think so? You think they just? Okay, they just walk across the desert or walk across like this ground with cowboys on their back for many, 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 many. And you don't think at any point their legs are like, dude? I'm sure they get tired. I'm but tired. <laughs> like, okay, I, I guess they, 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 they built saying. like that. They're just walking. Yeah, they're built. Like that. <laughs> yeah, they're built like that. So. God created them like that. <laughs> no matter how Amen. far a horse walks, no matter who it's carrying on its back, that Joker is got like, I got this. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. All right. You I ever mean, seen a horse struggle? <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> No. That's a, that's a great All the horse good, lovers out there, there listening go. are like, what yeah, are they doing? I have. <laughs> that's a good point. I've never seen a horse struggle. Yeah. But I, had I to, mean. But I'm thinking about it. They, they have to. Donkeys. I've seen a donkey struggle is before. Is that considered a horse? Though? It's, it's in the same family. It's in the equestrian family somewhere. 
The Equat family. What you? Is our, it was thank you, Equat. producer. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I didn't family. know that. She is big on horses, so she knows. Mm-hmm. Uh, She's so one of yeah. Our. Also today, I heard was well, National Cheeseburger Day. How do you get your cheeseburger? If you got the exactly the way you want it right now, how would you order it? Ooh, double bacon cheeseburger. I need some a uh, little bit of mayo, some ketchup, some pickles on there, maybe some onions. Mm-hmm. And I need some fries, definitely fries. Or onion rings, depending on. Homestyle home fries, food. shoestring fries. Uh, fries Ooh. like to come from checkers with all the seasoning on them. Or that's a good fry. That's a good. What about oh, Arby's with that little twisty? Yeah. Curly. You the curly. I mean, I could do curly fries. They just Not Arby's. Not Arby's. I think when you said Arby's, it's like there that threw are. those out the window. They have the meats. I mean, give me a, I don't know if it's real don't, meat. But don't those commercials freak you Speaking out? Speaking of horses. <laughs> What? <laughs> there was a whole thing going on about horse. Arby's. And They're made out of horse meat. It's not. Don't first say of all, that. no free ads. Okay. <laughs> Do you need a little ticker going across the bottom because none of this are the views of Mount Zion Baptist Church or other churches. Right. All these things. Uh, no, that it's not horse meat, but that was like a thing going around. I didn't Same with it. Taco Bell back in the day. Not that mm-hmm. I did. They were accused of horse meat. Uh, Sandy, um, cheeseburger, your favorite way. From where? Is your favorite cheeseburger? So, honestly, I don't, don't like burgers. Sonic, I'm not going to shoot you down. <laughs> honestly, you don't like, like burgers. <laughs> honestly, you don't do burgers. Right? So not you really. Participate in this day. National Cannot. Cheeseburger Day. Not yes. for you. We'll keep it to ourselves. <laughs> you made it real hard. Honestly, for that. Uh, I think mean, Freddy's is my number one burger. Uh-huh. Freddy's. Really? It's like the steak burgers. Uh, and it just steak and shake is just too slow in service. It's atrocious. They've always so, been slow. They've always. never. Ever since I'm no offense, Georgia. steak and shake lovers, but they have always been <laughs> if slow. If they're out there, I don't know where they're right. at. Best thing they I have feel like every. The chili? Yeah. I've never had their chili. Well, you're missing out on a big part of steak and shake. Love, I don't go. Wendy's don't try their. I don't try their chilies. Well, <laughs> steak and shake don't try chilies. Waffle House don't try their chili. You're missing out. Chili's not one of those things. Right, National Cheeseburger Day. What else is going on? Anything in your. Um, Sandy asked me, did you hear anything cool on the ride in the car today? No. I didn't hear anything. Like, any stats you want to throw out at us, man? I'm winning right now in Fantasy League. Oh, you are? Hey, me uh, too. Oh, the, yeah, that's, I got two more are, games to play today. Yep. Oh, this is I'm not, I didn't say 2-0, oh, so you're not. So <laughs> you're, I lost last oh, week. Oh, <laughs> well, so I haven't won yet. I, we, I got two more to play today. Oh, so we just go down the 2-0, oh, oh, one 1-1, one 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 sounds possible. like 0-2. Yeah, oh, Ooh. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm that. telling you, the AI on Yahoo <laughs> just wanted to play with my emotions when it sent me that A plus grade. I texted my group the other day and said that was a joke. It was, it was just a straight up joke and a mean joke. A plus grade? Yeah, that's what the AI gave me. A plus on my trade. <laughs> and ever and since you haven't then, won a game. Ever since then, Cadavian Tony, that's his name, Cadarius Tony, mm-hmm. whatever. I don't know. Uh, dropped like 18 passes. I mean, he's garbage. Uh, Travis Kelsey. <laughs> oh, man, getting old. He's trying to date T-Swift, so he doesn't have time <laughs> to play football. I mean, this guy's not even – you saw him doing the little dance the other day when he was walking? Yeah. Yeah, so he did that. He's not concentrating. Josh Allen completed more passes to the, uh, the Jets the other night than he did to the Buffalo <laughs> yeah, Bills. Oh, boy, so was like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sorry. I'm 0-2. Well, um, I saw a three. meme the other day that said, oh, your husband's an airline pilot or whatever – Awesome. Mine's coaching a fan of, uh, fake football team for the next four months. <laughs> that's, I love it. Yes. That's great. My that's husband awesome. does not want to have lunch with me on Sundays because, because he wants the, to go home to watch the football game. I, I, I hate to be that guy, but football, <laughs> hey, church ends at 12, 1230. Yeah. We need to be in the car at the house by at least it 1 is, o'clock. Um, <laughs> this, this, this kind of plays into our topic today, uh, the church and what is it and why do we do it and, and all these things. Um, but you learn a lot about people when you get in fantasy football games oh, yeah. with them. Um, everyone, I think, at some point in their life, there's competitiveness in their core somewhere. Like, yeah. I don't know what about God made is competitive like that. Like, because it says we're built in His image, right? Like we are reflections of the King, and I know I'm super competitive. <laughs> So if I'm God just picturing as God as being me. God. I mean, is it fair that he's competitive? He can just win everything. Like mm, that's it. He, you know, when Dad's supposed to let your kids win something, he never lets you win. God is just like <laughs> <laughs> he would crush Get you. Get better, son. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's. Yeah. I never thought of it. I mean, my dad used to back me down, like playing basketball. You know, turn around, do a little yeah. old man layup. That was a classic move because never you could. were so light and. He, they were not. Um, I would see God backing down everybody. Just <laughs> like, in the move, bank. little man. Move. Somewhere in God's spirit, there's competi- competition. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I could, believe, I could definitely believe. I mean, I could believe it. Yeah. Cause, and and somewhere, in, somewhere in there, he's got a funny bone, too. Oh, no doubt. It's like, he's, he's sarcastic. He's competitive. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's, 
They gotta describe like, me. And very unique. Guy. <laughs> very unique. <laughs> he does um, have a sense of humor. That's a fact. Yeah, um, for sure. The way he things happen, you have to look around sometimes and go, "Really, guys? Like, I know." <laughs> you want me to laugh at that? Yeah, you want me to laugh? At <laughs> yeah. I want to cry, but you want me to laugh. So, uh, but uh, Definitely. Definitely. this week, I'm trying to think what, what what went down since last time we got together. Just lost in fantasy football. Had a work day here with some young people at church. That was cool. Uh, crushed pickleball last week since we recorded. Told I mean, you, so that was really good. Told me before you played, what, 15 games? 15 games. Uh, yeah. At one point, we had went on a 7 0 run. It was really sick. So that, means, this is that not, means you're winning now. And listen, this is not against people over 60, okay? These are against decent people. That I wouldn't play. even They're go to classify. No, I'm it's saying like, for all the people out there that are going to be like, young. oh, he says he plays against older people. Who true, says honestly, that? the Who older says that? lady has never came back that I spiked on. I feel very bad about that. Well, you know, maybe, maybe I roll you should. over at night sometimes dreaming, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm so sorry, Mary. Like, Her name was Mary. Mary. Yeah. Just wow. <laughs> just That's good. awesome. And um, the other day, E man, I don't know if I told you this because I might not have seen you since uh, the other day, but um, David, the guy I play pickleball with that goes to church with us, spiked on someone in Sandy's volleyball tournament they had last week on yeah. an older person. What's and up they with told. Y'all? And they told him, you learned from the best. And I'm like, wow, that's messed up. So that means they definitely held a grudge for yeah. the fact that you spiked on Mary and she didn't come back. No. And you're sending people to go spike on other people. I'm not sending them out to do that. Well, <laughs> that's what they're that's I mean, what just that, from that's what example. I mean, <laughs> I mean, on a real note, that scares me to death because not just that, but like there are things in my life that if someone emulates and someone says, oh, you learned from the best, might not always be the best thing. Like, Make you cringe a little bit. Yeah. It's yeah, like, so eh, hope he didn't learn that kind of intimidating. <laughs> So we are talking about church today, and um, obviously that's the only reason I know both of you is, is because of church, is because of Jesus. Um, we could start there. Uh, just when you were asked the question, what is church, um, what do you say? Um, I think that for me, first thing, I'm just going to go basic th- thought process, a building. I mean, all the churches, Mount Zion, churches, literally the worship center, yeah. this building being the ark, uh, prior to its destruction, the, uh, the academy was considered church for me as well. Uh, I'll dive into that later, but um, I think when you really dive into it, church is like literally what you said. You, mm-hmm. you uh, Sandy, myself. It's not just the physical four walls. It's, it's yeah. more so the people within because I think church doesn't have to happen. I, I was going to ramble it off Mount Zion's uh, address. <laughs> I don't think church has to happen. one hundred two Mount Zion Boulevard. There you go. I don't think church has to happen there. It could happen at. I'm not going to give my address, yeah, yeah. but <laughs> it can, it could happen across can happen the street at Publix. It could happen. Mm-hmm. In, I thought it was interesting to follow up the, the New Testament. I read earlier never ever mentioned like uh, the synagogues, the yeah. meeting places. Never ever, ever once said the word church. One interesting question to me, and uh, maybe you were on the podcast year, year last year, and Mike asked this question. Did Jesus ever get to attend the church that he started? Mm. And I think question. the answer is no, right? Like a physical church, but I think as the church being us, he attended it all the time. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. In moments. I, I would agree with that. All right. So pause all your answers because you got a lot of answers. To, answer number one, you did good. I Sandy, didn't have any more answers. <laughs> you have more answers. But I, I could have gave one, but yeah. thank you. you <laughs> Sandy. What How is do the you church? define church? Yeah. Um, kind of like what E-Man said. Um, just the people body of Christ and I don't necessarily think it's the building or anything um, you can have it anywhere you know in the Bible verse that says you know where two or more are gathered there I am um, that is to me what church is and I think we learned a couple weeks back the sermon series was oh, yeah. called like Ecclesia yeah and that's exactly where what the, the word church Freaking. comes from yeah. is Ecclesia <laughs> and <laughs> but yeah it's more so the people, the body of Christ, the believers. I don't. I didn't grow up in. So, did you grow up in church? Kind of, yeah. Like how old when I you like remember like being in church? Eight. Yeah. You were basically born. I was in this born building. in church. Well, yeah. not in this building. Well, but technically, I, I, I was carried to this building. Yeah. <laughs> but, you oh, were, but I was pretty home? much from the really birth. Really. From nursery, well, you were here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess. I, what, what, well, it was an interesting start? thought the other night at our life group party we had. There was the lady there that ran the nursery for many, many years. And every child there, the oldest child being, he just turned 20, she had had them in the nursery. It was kind of wild. Who was uh-huh. this person? Um, well, no names because I don't know oh, what people what? feel like. Right, or, right. You know, they don't want people to Did know. Did they have me? They had you for sure. Yeah. 
Yeah. So I guess I w- that answers that. Yeah. Because <laughs> I, I didn't know. That answers that. So yeah, that's um, kind of cool. They've mm-hmm. been in for a while. But, so I didn't grow up in church. And so the church to me is never, I guess, all I knew about was a building, you know. But ever since I've been in the church, I've never thought about it as a building. Like mm-hmm. I've never thought about Mount Zion as this building or the building next door or anything like that. Um, I don't know why. I just always assume, understand it as the people. Um, because I guess uh, as the pastor, I think um, if we didn't have this building, we would still be Mount Zion. Like we would still be able to meet at your house or at, you know, wherever and, and do what we do. Yeah. Um, so it's just uh, the church is the people for sure. Um, what else about the church? So um, when you just think about church, what, what do you think people's um, feelings, when you say, do you go to, if you walked up on someone and said, do you go to church? Like, do you like church? Do you, what, what are the common responses, I guess? In 2023? Well, 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 yeah, well obviously in 2023. Here's where we are, yeah. <laughs> well, let's talk about what happened in 1999, man. Let's see. What well, back we, in 1999. <laughs> you were born in like. <laughs> yeah, that, that was a year. Not even a year. Maybe a full year, depending on the month. But no. Oh, uh, I think I think when you think about church now, it's like, it's not really not a building. It's like, oh, I can watch church on television. I could mm-hmm. Google church and find somebody yeah. is hopefully preaching mm-hmm. like literally instantly. I mean, I you can probably look it up now and somebody has a cut clip of something where they're talking and that's church on a, on yeah. a Monday. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I don't think to, today in 2023 it's a building. Although when you ask somebody, hey, you go to church and they quickly rattle off of, oh, I go to Mount Zion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it, I think for quick answers, yeah, that's the easy answer. I think a lot, yeah, for sure. And I think a lot of um, since COVID and just a different age that we're in now, um, the ability to uh, consume church from a, a million different yeah. angles and a lot of different ways. I mean, you could sit on TikTok for three hours on a Sunday morning and get all the church like preaching and words that you wanted to get that you're missing out on essential parts of the church. Yeah, uh, we we'll get into those, but. Um, <laughs> Do you come across, I mean, you come across younger people than I do. Is there a common thought about church, like, for people that don't go? Um, a lot of people actually, like, in the, current, in the current situation, I think social media plays a lot of factor into, like, people's thoughts on church. It's like a lot of people are, like, church hurt, and they look, they have negative thoughts mostly on church. And the few yeah. things that come with church and stuff. I think it's just mostly because social media doesn't help. It's like they show all of these like mega churches and yeah. things like that. And it's like. They show like the finished product. Of right. It. And not necessarily. I mean, if you think about like what you're supposed to look like going, walking in church, mm-hmm. you're not going to be all clean. You're not going to be all <laughs> suit and tied up neat necessarily. Yeah. Not necessarily people aren't coming to church neat. But it, social media shows, oh. Million dollar suit, million dollar car, mm. perfect life. Yeah, most, not yeah. the case. Most so. people are opposed to like coming to church because they're like. That's where you get judged. Most. I always, <laughs> I always hear like, oh, there's a lot of hypocrites in church. People are gonna judge me. Yeah. This and this and this. So, oh, that's yeah. That's, it's a, it's it's really um, interesting when you get into like your neighborhood, for instance, and you're like trying to really um, get a feel. Because like you don't just go to okay. If you do, it may work. It may not. I'm gonna say it's not gonna work. Random person, hey, you should just come to church with me. They'd be like, who are you, first of all? What is going on? <laughs> strange. So you kind of got to know, like, not necessarily know them, but you got to break the ice somehow, yeah. right? Like, conversate about something. Get in, oh, by the way, I go here, whatever, whatever. I've had my neighbors uh, pulling down the road before, and we'll just be talking. And, he'll, and one gentleman said one day, oh, I, I noticed you get your religion from that building down there. And I was like, oh, that's an interesting way to say that. I get my religion from yeah. there. And, like, and I didn't cut him off. I was, he's an older man, and I didn't want to get into that. So I was just like, oh. But it made me think like that's how people think like right. I get my religion from there and you yeah, get you your get religion, religion from there, there and and we all mm-hmm. and, or I just don't even want religion and, and that's all True. okay too um, and so it makes going out into the world um, as we said we had that friend that got out of ministry lately and he wanted the challenge of going into the real world um, you see it when you start get trying to ask people to come to church because yeah. my number I won't say number one I'll be, this is what I'm trying to learn also 
I have to quit saying my number one thing and my top. <laughs> Come to find out, you got a lot of top Heather, and number my, ones. Heather told me the other day, like, bro, if you rattled off your top movies <laughs> that you say in your top three, you got like thirty. Like, what are you talking? But I, isn't that everybody though? Yeah, Let's be honest. My number one movie is this. <laughs> but if my, you ask me on tomorrow, my number one movie might be something else. Or I mean. I'll say my number one pet peeve is this. Or but everybody one, has a lot of. Number yeah, one but pet apparently peeve. I have a lot too. <laughs> what really kind of um, um, made me go the other day, like, whoa. Someone said, um, they said one of my pet peeves. I was like, what is my number one pet peeve? And they said it right away. And I'm like, dang. I <laughs> that <said>. means you, <laughs> they're picking up. Yeah. <laughs> they're picking say, up. It, say it too much. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's, um, so it's hard to get out there because people do have the hurt. Yeah. They do have the understanding that I can just get it online. And so I guess what we're trying to uh, portray to them, and, and we've had a lot of conversations lately about when people walk through our doors or they come to church, they immediately feel loved. They immediate, uh, the gentleman yesterday preached about that agape love that is not just not conditional. It's not based on anything. Um, it's unconditional. You walk in. I don't know you. I don't know your situation, but you're here for a reason, right? Like God brought you through these doors. Um, there's a reason people come to church. Yeah. Like it's, it's very rare that you just randomly wake up like, oh, I'm just going to go to church. Like you get inspired by hurt, by life, by this, by that. And so when they walk through these doors, I mean, there's no other. There's nothing other than we should do is welcome. Yeah. And that's exactly what people experience here. And so we're like, how do we get this out to them that aren't going to come walking through our doors? Like the people across the street that we've been across the street from for many, many years, we don't have any idea who they are. Getting the message out to them. So we've been, well, I've been trying to be more um, in tune and posting pictures and whatever. And I hate I've them. Noticed like, it irks actually. me, bro. It irks <laughs> me. It makes me feel like. What do you mean? I, mean, I just don't like it. But I think it's good. I mean, I don't like yeah. taking the time to do it or whatever, but Sandy told me the other day that when I say it, I don't like Why t- are you about to say it like that? <laughs> you're about to say it in a com- Say it exactly like you were going to say it. He always blames me so for to me do it. <laughs> That's exactly how you were going to say it. I'm not blaming her. I These mean, are, when I she's say trying things, to keep you youthful. Absolutely. When I say things like Sandy told me, I'm, I'm saying it. My friend, okay, I'll say it this way. I had a friend inspire <laughs> Now we me all know that friend. I had a friend Cindy. encourage me. How do you want me to say it? I like that uh, one. Yeah. A friend encouraged mm-hmm. Encourage me in this way. That when you say that you're um, stingy with your time and whatever, people may not know how much time you've actually given to wherever. Because right. they don't see you except on Sunday. So, That's a good way to Hey, I'm hey, stingy with my time, but BT dubs, I'm going to go play golf at 3 o'clock. <laughs> and they're like, whoa. <laughs> I mean, like, where is this guy's priorities? Right. They don't know that throughout this week, I've spent many hours, like, doing whatever I do, you right, know, right, yeah. stuff. And so being more conscious of that, and, like, and I think all that helps. But that understanding of, like, people's church, they see pastors as people that play golf and have nice cars. And, yeah. you know, there's, there's, there's um, televangelists, is that the word for yeah. a television pastor? Um, that they bust all the time with their Lear jets and all these mm-hmm. things. So. <laughs> oh, you got a million. You got two jets. <laughs> it's for God's work. Yeah, I, need to I, I love the response. It's for God's work. Yeah, I'm like, trying man. to get these missionaries out there. Yeah, yeah so, so the church is the people. 100% agree. Yeah. I think that, um, the, and that is like a vital part that people don't um, see when they say, I can consume it online and I can and be a part of that. So yeah. then the second question is, what is the church? And then what, what was our follow up to this? It was like, how do I? So, like, why? Like, why should I go to church? <laughs> yeah, you know it. So you okay. wake up. Why, why should I go? I mean, okay. Me now you know church. what the church is. It's, it's it's not just a building. Founded on Jesus. Founded on Jesus. Not just a building. It's more. It's the people fellowshipping one. And I'm really giving you the why here. Fellowshipping with one another. It's hard to. It's already hard enough to be. A Christian in the world, <laughs> it, it's already hard. Why not? The only place I said, the only place you can be a Christian together with other Christians is at church. Once again, not nece- necessarily a building, but we're fellowshipping right now as Christians, and that's the importance of that's the why. Why should I go to church? In order for me to get rejuvenated throughout the week, going throughout this world of week, I need to be able to talk to other Christians. Hey, how was your week? How did yeah. you deal with this person? Cussing you out? How did you deal with mm-hmm. driving to work? This person cut you off. How how did you Christian minds and how did you mm-hmm. respond? And I feel like that is in mm-hmm. detail the why. Yeah, why, it goes. Why right. I go to church? It go, I had no idea what your answer was about to be either, but this is what oh. it goes with. <laughs> uh, Hebrews ten twenty four and twenty five says this: and let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. So exactly what you're saying. Yeah. We're to be together to encourage and inspire and lift up um, each other. I'm going to follow up on that, but I'll let you go. And then I, I didn't want to go too far off track, but I have another thought about what you just said. 
Um, so why don't we? Why should we go to church? You wake up, you're like, I mean, why? just kind of bounce off of his answer. Is you do get a deeper sense of like community and that like joining together with other believers is like a like the ultimate like fellowship. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. To me, it's you learn more when you are gathered amongst the people and right. there's life, real life like lessons you can take away from just talking to people, right. being so around desired. people. You can't get that when you're like online and just watching from a TV screen. So. Yeah, it, it was a, it's the same kind of feeling like when we were doing staff meetings during Zoom, I mean during COVID over Zoom and, mm-hmm. and, and meeting with people. And, and it's just not the same as we're, even the podcast, it wasn't the same as Mike being in Stockbridge, you in Riverdale, me in Jonesboro, even at the office communicating. We did it and we were able to communicate, but being in the room is better. The best example of that is a text message. Yeah, I mean, how many times have you sent a text and was like, uh, "Why you say it like that?" And like, yeah. that's not how I meant it. Yeah. And but if I would have said it in person, you would have known. Oh, wow. I, either I was being sarcastic or right. I was saying it jokingly. You, you or, can't do that over. Even when you video. follow it up with the comma, lol. Yeah, no, comma, it, it's. Sti- you know. I feel like that's even worse. Actually, when you're like, "Hey, that was cool," lol. Okay, now you're being. Now you're like mm, jabbing it. Yeah. But I feel like that's how it's the same difference from being at Zoom. Yeah, or being like you said for the staff meetings, I can't get you can't get Sandy's ideas mm-hmm. clearly of how she's putting them or mm-hmm. thinking about it when she's who knows how many Man, miles if, away. If I'm on a Zoom call and I'm not leading the Zoom call, my mind is everywhere. Else. <laughs> yeah, like, that's true. If I'm not the one having to make sure what we're talking about, then I'm everywhere. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm, the, the, until the, it comes. Hey, the TV's <laughs> on the background or whatever's over here. My dogs are there. You know, yeah. it's just like stuff's happening. My phone's on this other hand, like. Scrolling on uh, that's bad. What do you say, Twitter or X? Now I don't know what you're supposed to say. Yeah, that yeah, I, I've I had Twitter that stuff. One out. I still call um, it Twitter. I was thinking about what you said, and I guess together you guys said this. You come to be inspired, right? And you, I share in this, and you share in that. I was thinking about something I say a lot of times that I'm gonna stop saying, and I hear pastors saying it when they say, "I don't know what you're going through," but da 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 da. Mm. I was thinking that's not true. The scripture says that we all suffer the exact same things. Like that, if there's something that you think you've experienced, then it, it says it in a better way than that. But yeah. it basically says that we've all experienced the same thing. So I was just thinking about that the other, other day, um, how I say that. Yeah. And it's one of those churchisms, I guess people mm. say. <laughs> yeah. And I'm trying to rid myself of churchisms. That's um, hard. I feel like that's a part of why people don't want to come to church also. When mm. you get in the door, they start using these uh, Christianese, I guess people also yeah. call it as. Uh, tithing um, is is one of those words, Uh, communion, Lord's Mm -hmm. Supper. You start talking about drinking blood and eating a body, and if you don't know what in the world that means. Whoa, I don't want to join a cult. (laughs) Honestly, if I was not a Christian, I didn't know anything about it, and I come in like, the first picture I see is blood, and well, it's not necessarily blood, a cup of red, and then, then you... And you take his blood, I'm like, yes. Yeah, I see them passing a cup, I'm like, hold on, yeah, <laughs> passing blood. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna be nudging people, like, <laughs> I'm watching people drink it now. <laughs> but yeah, I could def- I could understand from a, even a young point, long, young viewpoint. It's like, yeah, I need somebody. To explain but I think that, that um, <laughs> I think I texted uh, Sandy this on Sunday after church, or e- uh, emailed them, um, and I think of my words. It was something like this: Worship is one of the most enjoyable moments of my week. Mm-hmm. Like being in church in that moment, um, being around other people that I know for that week, life wasn't perfect because no one's life is perfect. Knowing that we're all there, and you know they say don't go to church like um, uh, expecting something out of the worship service. Like I hope mm-hmm. this, I hope yeah. they bring, the, I hope the worship team brings it, I hope the pastor says something or whatever, and all these things. You go there expecting of what God's gonna do. Right. Um, not like what the people are performing and man those are the moments like I, I love that because every other moment of my week is either um, you know life is messed, life is involved <laughs> yeah, yeah. but for those moments you can like shut, shut, it, life, shut yeah. it out and I think that's why in those moments I'm so emotional sometimes like anytime little DJ sings uh, we went to that ordination service yesterday and DJ crushed um, God you're so good like he literally crushed it, and like I was cheering up again. Good I job, te- DJ. And I tell, te- yeah, <laughs> shout out DJ. Good job. I uh, texted Kim and said, "Man, tell DJ he has me tearing up." She's like, "DJ always makes you tear up." <laughs> <laughs> tell me something I, I she don't. She shuts know. you down like that. <laughs> That's fun. Shout out, Miss Kim, for shutting. <laughs> yeah. When you can get to that place where your heart is just like, uh, when you're in the presence of God and that song speaks to you like that, and tears start to go, 
that's, that's a deep. That's a deep song. It's a moment, bro. Yeah. It's a moment. So. I think that's also a good reason of why attend church is yeah. you can feel the presence of God even more yeah. than just like worshiping at home. Yeah. yeah. And, and as we've discussed, like if your sound quality is not amazing, <laughs> then the presence of God is that like, is right. You're like, that God is easily. That's no fun. I'm not trying to be funny, but that's true. God don't sound like that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we laugh, but that is so because it could be. It's already distracting enough yeah. mm-hmm. if you're not in person. If you're at home with millions of, I mean, everybody has their own distractions at home. So you can rattle them off. Yeah. And then let's say one, one little thing. thing. That's all it takes. Let's say the mic goes out for five minutes. The minute, I, five minutes. Mm-hmm. Five minutes. I mean, not, not, not five, two, Thir- couple tw- seconds. 12 seconds. 12 seconds. A mic goes out, you're out. Well, it's like, out. oh. You know what it is. Let me check the news. Real quick. You flip over it. Next, I think sports center's on now. Next thing you know, it's like, I'll oh, catch oh snap, week. it's 12 o'clock. I'll catch him next oh, week. And now you mm-hmm. see the screen. Thanks for coming. It's like, well, I'll try again next week. So, no, that is that is so true. It's hard to. And, and that's hard for people like myself because, I mean, I'm, we're not, I'm not a sound live stream technician. And right. neither is Sandy and neither is anyone we know. And so mm-hmm. it's like. God, we hear you. Like you got us doing all this cool stuff, <laughs> but you got to step in yeah. and make this thing better. Totally. But yeah, so that that happens. Distractions like that. Um, people are hurt. They have church hurt. Um, and 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 so if the church is, is the the foundation of the church is Jesus Christ. Like um, the sacrifice, the atonement of sins, the building up of people. Uh, he told Peter, Peter, you're the rock that I'm going to build my church on. And so from day one, when Jesus was building this church, we were part of that plan. He sent Peter uh, to the Gentiles to, to, to learn of Jesus, to, to know these things. And so we are a part of the church plan. Our lives are a reflection of Christ. So we're very instrumental in this whole thing. So how do we, as, as the church that, I mean, we could sit here and talk about worship and how much we love it all day. Obviously, we love it. We'll do a podcast to talk about how much we love it. How do we um, inspire others? How do you... How do you get someone else to see that, like at your job, E-Man, or Sandy, as you're at the gym or something, that they're not looking for that? I mean, how do we even how do you basically introduce that? Like, how do you make church fit other others, basically? Is yeah, like, how do you, so I guess that's the main question, right, when you're trying to evangelize or just even invite, uh, invitalize, I'll say. Like, just, how do you, make how do you go from, like, hey, what's up, dude, da-da-da-da, hey, you should come to church with me. It, this is why, like, this is how it... Mm. That's that's tough. Actually. I think that's now what? No, that absolutely. I, I tough. Say that's that's a tough one. I mean, <laughs> it's easy. I think it's easy to do it or think of it in because we're sitting here. But I, if I put myself in like I was, let's say three hours ago, in my yeah. in my desk, yeah. and everybody's work, <clears throat> working, I think it would be a little bit more of a challenge for me to be like, "Hey, yeah, what you doing on this day?" Mm-hmm. Let's. I think. I think the. Yeah, that, that, that's tough, actually. Yeah. And if we can answer that question, right. then we don't go around and say, like, well, why are there only this many people in church? Because that is the crux of, like, what one of my prayer, like, top of the prayer list things is like, okay, God, show me how to, like, get the, the excitement I have in me that I know I have that just, um, I almost said oozes again. I didn't. I said that on Wednesday night. I was like, that was a disgusting word. Uh, Spews. We, that just, that's even worse. That radiates, they radiates, said. Okay. God's goodness that's radiating out of me that I know is there to inspire someone else. You know, and so um, it's just a, mm-hmm. it's a, it's a tricky thing, but it's yeah. part of it. A worship is part of it where believers come together in the church. So if the church is uh, uplifting, then worship is a huge part of it. Uh, teaching, learning, yeah. reasons we have the church. Um, I mean, all these things as we're trying to grow. But what do you tell the? I mean, what about people, Sandy, that that aren't trying to learn and grow? Like they don't know that they don't know. Like, how do? You, That's a tough question, man. Yeah. <laughs> how do, you say how do you? So, um, Billy comes from wherever to play volleyball with us one night. Mm. He's not looking for Jesus. He just loves volleyball. I see what mm-hmm. you're saying. How do you go from? Hey, Billy, you love volleyball. So do I. I I think I think we got to take take the uh the concept of time kind of out of it as far as like it's not it may not happen next sunday and that for me i, I don't know about you for you two yeah. but for me it's when okay well if it ain't gonna happen this week forget it <laughs> we ain't doing it but i think when you when it comes to situations like that hey you know billy's got a messed up life yeah. or billy ain't living the life of a christian or a life that like, like I'm living as a Christian, and I want him to live that life. I think it's like okay, hey, maybe it starts off, hey, let's come, come, come to my church, let's play volleyball. Mm-hmm. It's as simple as that. 
volleyball art. Let volleyball be the whole reason that he comes to church. And then after that, hey man, you enjoy. I see you enjoyed it. Hey, we got on Wednesday. We play basketball. We got, we have a little little uh, time. So there's a dog. time investment. Yeah, it's it's a. I mean, time investment. Uh, and then from the person inviting, you got to hold yourself accountable. Like, okay, you're ch- trying to show him how to walk. So don't mess up your walk now, because <laughs> mm-hmm. he's looking at you. Don't invite him to church. Uh, and next thing you know, on Sunday night, and then you can you not yeah see him at the bar on Friday night. Is that what you're saying? Like well, hanging out? And yeah, like, that. But more so, don't not be here when he comes. Right. Don't don't let him come on Sunday, and you're not there. It's like, well, who invited you? Yeah. Yeah. He's not even. That should here. be number one. And when you invite someone to church, make sure you're there. Make sure you're there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And even, I mean, I get it. Some people are like, oh, I can't come this week. And then they show up the next week and they catch you off guard. But it's like, I think that little thing right there is like, okay, well, yeah. They had, that took the time to invite me and I showed up and they weren't there. Are you finding, Sandy, that as y'all are, because you've invested a lot of time in people, um, what would you say the percentage of payoffs is? Like, uh, Low, high. It's pretty low, yeah. honestly, being honest. Um, but it's not that we don't see mm-hmm. like that it's working. But like Eman said, you might not even e- yeah. live to even see the yeah. fruit of that. But what we're like, we do. I think we do a pretty good job when we do open gym volleyball and stuff. Yeah. And a lot of the people that we like invest in during that time, they do see us living lives like according to like the Bible and scripture and things. And so we are being good examples. And there was one comment, there was one time I was at a volleyball thing and someone had said to me, or it was during our volleyball tournament and I was running things and everything was going smoothly and all I got was positive notes on everything. And one comment was that, he was like, wow, you guys did so great like running this, like there was no no qualms, no no yeah. fights, nobody like it was all good. That's and then, at a gym. <laughs> and I, yeah, and I was like, I mean, I feel like the the people that are here, we've like spent a lot of time with, invest in them, and they trust us. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, you you spend time with people, they see the good, and out of that they do good right, if yeah. that makes yeah, any that sense makes, that makes purpose yeah. yeah so of course like in my mind i was like of course things are gonna run smooth like the people, <laughs> it always least, runs they, <laughs> the people they love us yeah. and yeah. they respect us yeah. and things yeah. like that so it's just an outpouring of what we poured out right and they see it and it, i think because we've been doing emmanuel i would say open gym started with basketball eight years ago maybe even longer i remember it was um everyone we just yeah, started it, was, it but it was a different it was, it was a, a different, different crowd. crowd than mm-hmm. there is for volleyball. A little harder crowd, I would say. A little, yeah. little more rough a little more crowd. Rougher, um, a little more I aggressive. mean, basketball is just a little more intense. It's body touching body. Like right. you're, it's you're more. It's an aggressive game. game. And true, we didn't. True. We never <laughs> once gave out a prize for who won the tournament for the night. But there was always competition. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I will say this: that all those years, there was only one skirmish, like one yeah, little I was, thing. I only remember and, one. And it was just one time. And you got to think that there and were that thousand, didn't last long. There were a thousand <laughs> men and women that came through this gym and only one time. So I agree, Sandy, that mm-hmm. when you invest in people and they see your heart, yeah. uh, the coaches always say this. It's one of those coach sayings or pastor sayings that I try not to say, but like people don't I want to know how much you know till they know how much, much you care. care. And yeah. I don't like that saying, but it's a fact. Mm-hmm. Um, like when those people see how much you care, you know, same thing with the kids at FCA. Um, once they see that you care, then your words mean more. They're not just, you're not trying to step in and like, just try to tell them what's good and they're bad and right. all this. They're like, oh, okay, you really actually care about my life and yeah. like who I am. Yeah, so that's a fact. So um, that's good. Yeah, so all these things are, I mean, the church is, for me, I used to say, I think I may have said this in another podcast or a meeting, but um, I used to say I'll never go to church because when I walk through the doors, lightning's going to strike me. <laughs> so it was intimidating yeah. when I wasn't a Christian. Like, I thought that everyone inside the church was holy and, like, didn't do wrong, and I was going to walk in and be obvious. Like, mm-hmm. walk in, they're going to oh, this guy. Yep, we see. But what <laughs> so I brought the is, man, um, the church is just as broken, if not more broken, because we know the truth and constantly make conscious uh, decisions to go against the truth. Like not, not, not like out of evil, not out of, I'm, gonna, I'm going against God today, but out of, you know, you're pleasing the flesh or you're pleasing the senses, like that felt good or I want to go think about this and I don't want to think about that. And, you know, those types of things and all of that um, is part of mm, the distance we have with God and 
the intimacy we have with God and it has a part of it. And so we've established what the church is, the gathering of people together that are surrendered to the Lordship of Jesus that died for our sins. We, why we should do it, a lot of different reasons we just discussed. And then so if I'm new to a church, and I, like when I was new to Mount Zion, I've shared before what drew me in. Um, you were born here, so that's what drew you in. But what, what do we, how do I get plugged in if I'm new into Mount Zion? Um, what, how would you encourage someone to get plugged into the church and feel the heartbeat and the flow? Sandy, answer this one first. Um, I think just once you start, you're talking about once they like attend yeah, the church. Yeah, just as people, you know, because we have visitors every week. They joined and stuff. I think even before they join, like mm -hmm. how do I even know if I want to join? How do mm -hmm. we? I think it's just finding what you're interested in, honestly. Like if you go to a church and say it doesn't have like a youth, youth young adult, you're yeah. probably not prone to like stay <laughs> because there's just not that for you. Mm -hmm. And just finding something that you're interested in starts, it's starting out with that and then from there, where can that fit into like a ministry yeah. position or even just like for me, I was able to like plug in easily into the church because like I love music, like playing, like singing, and there's definitely a lot of that in the church, you know yeah. what I mean? And so like just being and just finding stuff that you're interested mm -hmm. in, the people you're interested in and going from there and, you know, doing life. Life group is a good start. Yeah. Seeing what and you kind of got to let your guard down a little bit, that, like you mm. kind of because we all have these fences built up around yeah. us when we go to new. I know I do for a fact. If I go somewhere and I don't know the people in the room, <laughs> man, you're gonna have to break down. My, my name is all you're like getting. A, yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, I was it's at the true. service at yesterday, and there was a pastor there that I definitely did not know, but he kept saying like, "I think I know you from somewhere." And, nope. Are you this? And I kept saying, "Absolutely not." <laughs> like definitely. <laughs> So you definitely don't know me from there. Yeah, right. What about here? I was like, definitely not. You know, like, <laughs> nope, what was your name again? again. Russell. <laughs> Good to meet you. You know, he was doing all those things. Yeah. Yeah. When I'm in a strange environment, you're not getting much out of me. True. Um, but when I was searching for church, I was very vulnerable. Like, when I walked through these doors, I didn't know. Honestly, I didn't know we were searching for church. We just came to watch my brother be baptized. And when we came through the doors, I experienced everything that other people experience here. I felt so loving. And I was like, whoa, what's going on here? Sean was one of the first people that welcomed us here. I always said she was my mom away from home because her and Mallory were like brought us in. Um, Miss Becky was another one. Just people that were just loving us. And so I was like, man, this is weird. I wasn't looking for this, but I kind of like this. We were away from home. We were in Atlanta. I'm not from here. I don't know yeah. anybody. You know, the person that we moved, moved here to live with just moved away. Like now we're really all by ourselves. And so what do we do? But the whole time God had it in control and God had these people there that are now like my family. Um, but I had to let my guard down, you know, because mm -hmm. I was coming in going, man, lightning is going to strike. And I'm definitely not telling y'all about my life because y'all are going to judge me and you know but I didn't and I came in and, and it's been obviously the best thing in my life <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> cool so um but you grew up here you grew up in there so was there ever a time I guess you're the opposite was every time you're like Psh, I don't need church I basically live there like I know at what else can they teach me um as far as like what else they're gonna teach me I, I never really had that okay good. <laughs> that <laughs> Because obviously, there's obvious, even now, there's more I can learn. Oh, Because if you're going to say that, I was going to be like, sweet, can you preach? Um, <laughs> for a little bit, I'm going to take a break and <laughs> go study some of what you got. <laughs> um, but no, I would say, I, from being so I, I guess, really didn't have a chance to be out of church. <laughs> how do you fit in, or how I fit in? I just found, for me, it took time. Time, I read. Where she said, find something you're interested in. Yeah. I would agree. Uh, I think, not not to be just worldly, but I think you got to be somewhat interested in something to stay included. Of course. Yeah. yeah. yeah I feel like you, if, if you're not interested in the fact that Mount Zion has whatever it may be. Of course. You're probably not going to, like she said, not going to stick around long. Yeah. So I think that's a key but also at the same time, like you said, you have to be, you have to let your fences down. You you have to be able to be willing to try different things. You never know what you don't know. Mm -hmm. For instance, you don't know if you can cut grass until you get out there and cut grass. <laughs> you don't know if you enjoy cutting grass until you get out there and That's cut right. grass. Some people are still waiting to find that out. 
And some people are, are and some people may never want to try, but I, I encourage you. If you think you could get, you don't, maybe be like, man, I've never seen a lawnmower, yeah. never seen a weed eater. I want to see what that's like one time. In order to do that, you got to go out there and try it. And that requires a level of vulnerability. Yeah. And I think once you mix vulnerability and finding something you enjoy, and you can be like, okay, I found somebody I enjoy. They love me right where I'm at, right where I'm vulnerable. Mm -hmm. I like this place and mm -hmm. I think that's when you start to oh I'm doing mission trips I'm I'm cutting grass when mm -hmm. I can't stand the grass I'm playing pickleball I'm playing random whatever yeah. I'm I'm who knows mm -hmm. but I just feel as though you have to be like you said vulnerable yeah but at the same time you have to find something that you generally have interest in because if you don't have interest in it another fall to it you won't want to find a way to serve in that mm -hmm. interest part of like what i'm always trying to tell people like everyone around here has different passions and things and like god can use those in some way yeah because someone else has that same interest and like mm -hmm. we can go together and go hiking like they did the other day we can get together and play pickleball we can get together and play basketball on saturday mornings all that is church yeah. like all that is building up of the body of believers it doesn't always look like it and sometimes you're like man all i do is Play pickleball and hang out with people and play golf, but I'm investing in like lives of people. It just looks different, you know, and, yeah. and so it's uh, it's vitally important. Sandy, any other thoughts before we go towards the end there? No, uh, Miss Producer, where where do we sit? Beautiful. Um, the other thing I think that we've talked about it, but just the fellowship that happens within the church. Um, the scripture from Acts is one that comes to mind that I wrote down, um, 44, 45, and they had everything in common sharing their belongings, um, indicating like that uh, there was like this strong sense of community. You know the scripture where it says they were selling all their stuff and like made sure no one went without. I'm always like, man, I hope no one ever challenges me on that. Like, <laughs> you need to sell everything. You need. Like, the rich young ruler, that's what he told him yeah. to do. But he also told like when the churches were together, like, and then they, they took care and no one went without and all these things. Man, that would be a call that I don't know that I could answer as easily. <laughs> I see the passion behind right it. I, I see the passion but that would be and, if, a, and uh, if one of my brothers and sisters in this church came to me and said hey pastor russell i have this need yeah. i would definitely make sure it was met right yeah but just randomly going out and selling my whatever your toys, go sell your truck sell, yeah i'll say anything other than that yeah go sell your truck so e-man can have a, a loaf of bread <laughs> i would do it for you e-man i would do it for you i would be so now, upset that's with one you. expensive i would bread. rather you give me the truck <laughs> I'll go buy wheat and harvest my own this? bread. We can go. We can go make a bread farm. <laughs> uh, I did look up this because we wanted to come with some facts and stats. But uh, um, there's a website I didn't pull this off of. Uh, just random Russell's mind, but mm -hmm. Statista you can look at from 2022. This is stats of people that went to church and didn't go to church. A uh, 20 percent of people said they go every week. I would believe that. 11 or 10 percent said almost every week. 11 said once a month. 26% uh, said seldom, and then the biggest number on the thing, 31% said I never go to church. And I mean, I, I, I believe that, yeah. like, mm -hmm. because um, when you, the moments I don't go to church, and it's like twice a year when I'm on vacation, if I'm somewhere, um, you're out and about on a Sunday morning, there are a lot of There's people lot just of people. not Have you church. ever been to Walmart on a Sunday? <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of people not in church, and you're like, man, what are, what are y'all doing? Like, you know, it's you're missing. You're not going to church? Out on church, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And it, so... The, the, the challenge is hard, like, to get people to join, I think, but the, the, um, the writings on the wall, like, in Daniel, you see it working. I see it working as the pastor of Mount Zion, as friends with everyone at the church. And I see pockets of things working where people are investing the time that you guys mentioned, where people are accepting people right where they are, where we're not trying to take credit for any of it, but we're constantly pointing people back to the fact that, they're like, I'm just as messed up as you. Jesus met me where I was, and here we are now. He can do it in you. And so there's a there's a encouraging thing happening there. And so uh, I was encouraged when I started studying this topic to get ready to talk about tonight because I think a lot of things we do at Mount Zion are going in the right direction. Um, now, if this if this podcast tonight was about tithing, we'd probably go in a different direction because that's a <laughs> hard one. And like. I don't know. When we get to that topic, yeah. I'm going to be interested <laughs> we'll, we'll to see the feedback there. to that and see if people think you're stepping on their toes or how hypocritical we're being or whatever. I think that's an interesting topic. Um, yeah. When you start talking about people's checkbooks, you start getting real oh, yeah. real yeah. personal. And so, um, But we would love to have you. If you're just a, a listener and um, are looking for a church home, you're looking for a body of believers like to be a part of, 
Um, this is the spot. I always say that, and it's yep. not just because I'm the pastor. It's because I've been to other churches. And, I mean, just humbly speaking, it ain't it. Humbly mm. speaking, I would agree. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't it. Speaking of one that went church shopping and chose to come here. <laughs> yeah, it so ain't she's it. not so humbly speaking, <laughs> so but she's factually some, speaking over God here. God has something going on here, and I yeah. know it. Yeah. And, like, and, I, and I can feel it. And so when I get to those moments where I want to think about what I don't have or um, I actually texted um, a friend in church yesterday when I was at the service. During church? Not my our church when I went to the other oh. service. Yeah, it was definitely during church. I, I'm <laughs> I was not like, preaching. wow. I'm very antsy. I'm doing things, okay? I was checking my fantasy football team. I was, he was recording. Yeah, I did see him recording. I recorded DJ. Recording. You know, I did all that. Um, I texted recording. her and said, I'm too blessed, comma, next time I complain, please remind me. Because it was just mm -hmm. like the stuff the gentleman was talking about was like um, disgruntled members or this and that. And I'm like, I don't have any of that. Like, I don't, we don't have any of that here. There's no one like trying to riff go against the grain like if mm. Jesus said do it then everyone's all in and so that's a really blessed place to be as a pastor and so we keep going yeah. like that's what we keep doing so yeah any other closing thoughts uh, are we just ready to um, I just I, I only closing thought I would say as far as the church I would just if you're looking for that church home like like we said be, be willing to put those fences down because it although it is hard I get it There's there are some churches that is it is it, you, you need to have the fences down. I yeah. get it but when you let the fences down, you you kind of see the truth behind the church. I yeah. think you see what the church really is versus <clears throat> your possible picture of what it was when you were a childhood or whatever. Whenever you might have separated from whatever church right. you might have been, but I think when you put your take off your glasses, put your fences down, and you're like, hmm, mm -hmm. okay, this church does it this way. This church does, it. and I mean, it's okay to like she said, church shop. Mm -hmm. it, if you don't like it here, okay, try somewhere you else. You can church shop, just don't church hop. Right, mm. yeah, there you go. I think that, yeah. that's real, yeah, that's real, but that's uh, true because uh, yeah. once you find where you stick, I think it's important for you to stick because in order for you to grow as a Christian, you got to be able to grow with yeah. fellow believers, like I say, with something you're interested in and figure out how to, to make that interest work for God. That's right. Well, really, God already go, God's already going to do it. See, I was but. about to follow you up by saying all that is very important, but before any of that happens, God is going to spark something in yeah. you where you even begin to start thinking, is this the place for me? Yeah. I feel like it might be. Mm -hmm. Like, that's not even of you. Yeah. That's of God. He's going to draw you to wherever you need to be. I would encourage you to say that if you are feeling that way, don't just keep waiting around until like, oh, I'll get to it one day. Like, jump in. Yeah. Get involved. Your life will never be the same. You'll you'll experience life in a whole different way. You'll just see things in a different way when you're around those type of people. Because the world, if you're not in a church and you're not around believers, the world is a dark, ugly place. And you can um, go down a go down a drain really quick. Yeah. Um, but when you're around people, you feel encouraged, man. Like, we're in this together. Yeah. Like, it's hard, yes, but Jesus has an answer. God has the plan. Um, the days I'm struggling, you, my, my brothers and sisters are here to lift me up. The days that I'm praising, we're here to praise with God together. I'm going to have someone to reach out to, have yeah. people to do. You know, it's just a, there's too many blessings in the church. I um, mean, we have to remember whatever our preconceptions, I think, is the word you're thinking of, right. uh, of church. Just to leave it at the door and walk in and say, God, what are you doing? Yeah. And is this a spot? So. Yeah, word. So, uh, like, subscribe, share. We appreciate all the responses we got last week. They're very good. Um, no honestly, um, most views we ever had on a video so far was pretty sweet. sweet. I think it was an addition of Sandy. She knows people in high places. Okay. So, thank all you right. for all those new Y'all are, are holding their place in yeah, there. Yeah, y'all holding their place in here. Uh, so, we appreciate all of that. And so, if you guys have any thoughts, please leave it in the comments. Um, every time we get a comment or things, um, it encourages me just to know that someone's listening, for one, but that it made you think, it made you, uh, like, sparked a thought in your mind about what God was doing and how he's doing it. So, what about if they're interested in being on the show? On what this they, show? What do they got to do if they it, wanted to be on the show? Oh, man, you got to be on the show. Um, you I don't know, know, somebody's out there watching, thinking, like, man, I wish we could I be, be on, on the podcast. Or a guest or something. Oh, uh, we could throw in a guest. Never if know. you have a hot topic you want to talk about, send it to eman at gmail.com. Um, and if he gets that, then we'll, I will we'll make bring, sure we we'll talk just about randomly it. bring you on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but like it is, we thank y'all for listening. Like always, like, comment, sure. subscribe. Yes, sir. What's our uh, going out sign? Go to church. Pick a church. Find a church. Go to church. Hey.